Good morning and welcome to worship at Zion Lutheran Church in Buffalo, Minnesota. We're glad that you have joined us. Happy Father's Day for all those who offer the, uh, the fatherly uh, part of someone's life, uh, whether you're a father, grandfather, or stepfather, or just uh, offer fatherly advice sometimes. Happy Father's Day to you. A couple of announcements as we get going. Uh, first of all, uh, as everyone is, is wondering about, uh, we do have a, a farewell scheduled to, uh, to say goodbye to Pastor Ted Vanderpan and uh, celebrate the 12 years, almost 12 years of, of ministry he's provided in this place. That is scheduled for Sunday, uh, June 27th, after both uh, the in-person worship services, as well as on Monday night, the 28th, uh, after the Marysville service. So you can plan on joining us either after the Sunday in-person worship services or Monday night after Marysville. 
Speaking of Marysville, uh, we are having Marysville uh, worship uh, as weather allows through the month of June. And uh, so if you would like to come and uh, join in worship at that historic church, uh, we invite you to do so. Uh, the uh, future beyond June it will be determined, but we are worshiping there on Mondays through the month of June as weather allows. Uh, and we are standing in our sanctuary again. And uh, due to the work of many uh, volunteers and many uh, talented professionals, uh, much work has been done, as you can see. And uh, we do not have the exact date we will return uh, to sanctuary worship. Uh, so please keep your eyes open and ears open for that. But we did want you to get uh, a chance to see uh, what has been done so far and what has yet to be done. We uh, are so grateful to all those, uh, both the professionals who have come in here, uh, but also all the volunteers from Zion who have made this uh, happen to the point that you see it right now. Those are our announcements for this morning, so I invite you to turn to those who are worshiping with you. Give them a, a good morning, a sign of peace, and a welcome to worship. We're glad to have you here. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help, help us. us. It, it is, is hard, hard to believe there is, there is enough, enough to share. To share. We, we question your ways when, when they, they differ, differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there's always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in reading this psalm responsively. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Let the the redeemed redeemed of the the Lord Lord say say so, those those he redeemed redeemed from from trouble. trouble. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. From the book of Job, the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, Thus far you shall, shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. Good morning, Zion kids. It is so good to have you here with us in worship today. You know, I was wondering if any of you have maybe a puppy at home who is scared of storms. Sometimes dogs, they get really scared of storms, like if there's thunder and lightning. Do any of you have a dog that does that, who runs and hides, or maybe they they put their tail underneath and they get scared of storms? It's understandable because, you know, sometimes people get scared of storms too. Have you ever been outside in a storm and the lightning was crashing and the thunder was loud and maybe it was raining so hard that you felt a little scared too and you wanted to go curl up and be safe? Well, that's what happened in the Bible story that we're going to hear today. Jesus was out in this boat with his disciples. They were fishing and they'd had a great day, but then suddenly a big storm rolled in. And the disciples were really scared. Maybe the waves were really big and the thunder was crashing. Maybe there was even lightning. And you know, you shouldn't be out on the water when there's lightning. They were really scared. Jesus was just sleeping. He was taking a nap in the back of the boat. And the disciples woke him up and they said, Jesus, we're really scared of this storm. And you know what? Jesus spoke to the storm and calmed it all down. And that calmed the disciples down too. So sometimes when we're feeling really scared, we can remember that Jesus is actually with us too, just like Jesus was with the disciples. And Jesus can calm those storms, not just storms outside, but sometimes storms we feel inside. When we're feeling really scared inside ourselves, in our own hearts, our own minds, things feel really stormy. Jesus is with us and Jesus can help calm us down. I'm going to actually sing a song with you. I'm going to teach you this song. It's from the hymnal. It starts calm to the waves. So we're going to have, there's a couple motions that I'll show you. We'll sing it through twice. So maybe if you want to sing this song with me as a reminder that Jesus can calm down any storm. Let's sing.
that's a great song to just sing to yourself anytime you're feeling scared of a storm outside or a storm inside. So let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you for being with us through all the storms. Storms on the outside and storms on the inside. Help us to remember that you are with us and you can keep us calm. And all of God's children said, Amen. See you later. I can see the clouds roll in. I can feel the winds, they try to shake me. I will not be moved. My feet are on the rock. I can feel the waters rise. I can hear the howling lies that haunt me. Fear won't hold me now. My feet are on the rock. When I feel my hope about to break. I will cling to your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way. I'll be dancing in the rain. My feet are on the rock. I can see the morning light. I can feel the joy on the horizon. Here my faith is found I stand on solid ground When I feel my hope about to break I will cling to your unchanging grace Let the waters come and the earth give way I'll be dancing in the rain My feet are on the rock Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand So stomp your feet and clap your hands Our feet are on the rock On Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand So stomp your feet and clap your hands Our feet are on the rock On Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand So stomp your feet and clap your hands Our feet are on the rock I feel my hope about to break I will cling to your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way. I'll be dancing in the rain. When I feel my hope about to break, I will cling to your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way. I'll be dancing in the rain. My feet are on the rock. Ooh, my feet are on the rock. Ooh, my feet are on the rock. Our gospel text for today comes from the Gospel of Mark, the fourth chapter. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Well, there's great irony for me in this particular gospel text appearing on Father's Day. One of the stories my dad and my uncle Cleet used to love to tell over and over again was about a day in my childhood when we were out on the Mississippi fishing and I fell asleep in the back of the family boat. 
Now, I don't recall the details because I was young and apparently asleep, but to hear my dad tell it, they tried everything to wake me, even honking the horn of the boat, but nothing worked. Well, I recently contacted my Uncle Cleet about that story, and if nothing else, I've learned that over the years he's mellowed a little bit. His response, and this is from a man with a long reputation of mercilessly te teasing others, read, you were young, we started early in the morning, and as usual, we were catching little or nothing, as I recall. It was easy to get bored, and with no action, easy to get sleepy. Your early enthusiasm for fishing got wiped out as our success got worse. So you decided you needed sleep more than trying to catch a fish, and so you found a comfortable position and caught some Zs. Of course, your rotten uncle just couldn't give you a pass and had to tease you about it. Well, whenever I hear our gospel story today about Jesus asleep in the back of the boat, during a raging storm, no less, that story from my childhood pops into my, into my brain. But, of course, Jesus and the disciples were not out for a pleasant family fishing outing, and the story didn't end up as an amusing anecdote to tell again and again. It was evening after a busy day, and a weary Jesus suggested to the disciples that they leave the crowds and sailed to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And Mark writes, they took him with them in the boat just as he was. And that's a rather peculiar detail for Mark to include. And it suggests a very suddenness of the trip and also that Jesus was extremely tired, very fatigued. Because of the large crowds, Jesus had, had been teaching already in a boat a little ways offshore. So apparently when they decided to leave, the disciples just turned to and started heading for the other side. They didn't even come back to land for anything. Now historians say that boats of the time had a wooden or leather covered seat at the stern. And that is probably the cushion that Jesus used for his nap. And it probably wasn't very comfortable, but Jesus was so exhausted that he was able to fall asleep. And then during the journey, this storm arose, but it wasn't just a little shower. The Greek word that is used is megas. This was a mega storm. Remember, some of the disciples were professional fishermen. They were well acquainted with bad weather and well acquainted with this particular water. That they feared for their lives meant this was some real danger. And yet Jesus slept on. And the disciples probably did everything that they knew of to keep themselves and the boat safe and upright in the face of this tempest, but it was no good. They were being swamped. And so they finally wake Jesus up and their words are a little rude. They say, teacher, don't you care that we're dying? And Mark writes that Jesus then rebuked the wind and told the sea to be still. Now those same Greek words are used earlier in Mark's gospel at the temple at Capernaum in Jesus's first appearance in his public ministry when Jesus rebuked an unclean spirit and tells it to be quiet and come out of a man. And now as Jesus speaks to the wind and the sea, we get the word megas again. There is a mega calm. Now there's a slight difference between how Mark and Luke tell this story than in Matthew's gospel. In Matthew chapter eight, the author writes that the awoken Jesus asked, why are you afraid you of little faith? And then calms the storm. But in Mark and Luke, Jesus first silenced the storm and then gave a comment on their faith. James Boyce is a retired Greek professor and he likens the frantic words of the disciples to a prayer. He writes, the cry amounts to a prayer for deliverance and it is immediately and directly answered. Jesus does not chastise or reason with their fears. He does not seek to correct their poor theology. But now that the rescue is accomplished and the sea is calm, there's time for some needed disciple instruction. 
So when this storm is gone and calm is restored, the disciples to whom Jesus had promised the secret of the kingdom of God are left filled with great awe, Mark writes, and asking, who then is this? They've learned that the one that they took into their boat just as he was, was something extraordinary, something they couldn't quite grasp yet. Remember, instead of Lord, they refer to him as teacher. Well, this text concludes the fourth chapter of Mark, which also included a handful of parables comparing God's kingdom to seeds and a light under a bushel basket. You can decide for yourself whether you think Jesus had the disciples set sail with full knowledge of this impending storm and knowing how the the events would play out. But it's not tough to see how today's story becomes a concrete example of the abstract images that Jesus used in the parables. The parables spoke of the mystery of God's kingdom beyond our comprehension. And then the disciples experienced that mystery in the middle of the sea. Rather than starting a parable and saying, the kingdom of God is like, Jesus demonstrated the kingdom of God in real time. As in many places in the Bible, we may hear this story and shake our head at the characters, the thick-headedness of the disciples. We think we wouldn't have denied Jesus three times like Peter would. We continue to talk every year of doubting Thomas, like we would have done anything differently. How often in the mega storms in our lives have we asked God and Jesus in an accusatory tone, don't you care? James Boyce continued in his commentary, their cry is the ultimate cry of fear, of doubt, and abandonment. Where is God in the midst of my distress? Has God abandoned God's people? It is a cry repeated in so many ways in the midst of the terrors and distresses of our world today. If God is so great and powerful a creator, if God cares about this world, then why do events in the world and in my life go so badly? Well, that's the same cry of King David in Psalm 22, repeated by Jesus on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And it's the same cry of Job, who lost everything in his life and then had to listen to three bumbling, clueless friends try to make sense of it all. Job, who said, why did I not die at birth? And I loathe my life. And Job, who gets a very pointed answer from God today, a little fatherly discourse, maybe, in today's Old Testament lesson. Now, the passage from Job is just the beginning of a long speech from God in response to Job's lamenting. And sometimes when we read these words and try to apply them to our lives, they feel inadequate, like they just don't really answer the question. And the reason for that, from a human standpoint, is that, well, they're inadequate and they don't really answer the question. But the message that many people take from this text is that we shouldn't question God. We shouldn't share our confusion, our grief, anger, or other emotions with God when we travel through life's difficult times. And we end up feeling guilty when we cry out to God, when a loved one dies, or a relationship ends, or we suffer another type of loss. What right do we have to complain, we think this passage is teaching us. But I believe the point of these words is not to say, don't express your emotions to God, but maybe to understand that we're not going to get an answer or may not understand the answer we do get. On this Father's Day, think of being a parent. Do kids always get why we do what we do? at the time that we do it. Not always. This long response from God could be the ancient equivalent to Jack Nicholson's iconic line in A Few Good Men that he apparently ad-libbed, 
You can't handle the truth. And Job seems to see a little bit of the light since about halfway through God's long speech, he says, I am of small account. And after God finishes, Job replies, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Mark's inclusion of the calming of the storm just after those seed parables is a continuation of a theme of the mysteriousness of God's kingdom. And that's only reinforced by coupling this story with the response of God to Job. As the Son of God, Jesus had a unique insight into the kingdom of God, but we mere mortals in our short lives do not and cannot understand God's cosmic plan. Does that mean that sometimes we could be accused of having little faith, as Jesus said to the disciples? Yes. Is that a surprise to God or Jesus? I doubt it. Remember that Jesus immediately calmed the storm, and it's not like he fired the disciples when they arrived on dry land. And God restored Job's fortunes twofold. God will not turn away from us when our faith wavers or when we cry out in difficult times. God knows our limitations as our creator. And God hears and understands and even welcomes our emotional prayers sent up to heaven. The storm on the Sea of Galilee and the interaction between God and Job both have meaning beyond their respective moments in time. They're reminders of the eternalness of God's plan for the universe and that Jesus was the earthly fulfillment of God's kingdom. But what started with Jesus 2,000 years ago isn't done yet. It is still a work in progress. And the quick blips our earthly lives take up in God's eternalness leave us unable to imagine the awesome mystery of how the story will end one day. Meanwhile, our call is to be disciples of Christ in our time, in our places, placing our trust in our heavenly parent, our creator, and following the example of our Savior, Jesus. Please join me in prayer. God, we thank you for all the ways you bless us in our lives. We know that our limitations mean that we don't understand the cosmic uh, eventuality of your kingdom. Help us to maintain our faith, but hear us when we cry out to you in times of difficulty. Help us to put our trust in you that you hear our prayers and are present with us. We thank you for the love that you showed through Jesus and ask that you would guide us to follow his ways in all we do, think, and say. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Say
I invite you to join in confessing our Christian faith this morning with this paraphrase of uh, the Apostles' Creed. We believe, we believe in one in God, God who is creator, creator, maker of all we see and all we, we don't see, see, who is ruler of the universe, source of all creation. creation. We, we believe in, in one God, God who is Savior, Savior God, God from, from God, God, light from light, light true God and true human. He is one with the Creator, the Word made flesh, our Messiah, Deliverer of all creation. We believe in one God who is Holy Spirit, breath of God moving among us, who is one with the Creator, one with the Christ, our Comforter and our Guide, Mentor of all creation. We believe in one God, three in one, and one in three, God of love, life, and abundance, who shows the way, walks alongside, and gathers us as one, our source of grace and forgiveness, guider of all creation. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. You sent your Son that the world might be saved through him. Help us to cherish that gift and to live with grateful hearts for all you have done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen Zion that we might truly share Christ's word, strengthen faith, and serve those in need. We especially pray for your leading and guiding in this time of transition. Empower Zion leaders with wisdom and insight for a new time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through the work of people, your steadfast love, love is shown to all the world. We pray for all who help us in educational systems, teachers, administrators, coaches, support staff, custodians, home school teachers, and all others who assist. Renew them during this summer break and re refresh them for new challenges they face. Help us to learn of your ways in scripture, through the church, and through educational systems. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry or without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort to those who mourn. We pray in the silence of our hearts and name them before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom the power, and, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we go from wherever we are uh, for worship 
and with all we are and all we do. We will we trust, will trust live, live, and serve Christ Jesus, Jesus our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Thank you.